scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Respectfully speaking, the troubles that we have gone through in various shades are proof, if you are to be honest, that we ignored his guidance. Can I tell you in this end time, the guidance, of, the guidance of the Holy Spirit may mean the difference between life and death. Because there is a limitation in all men. Naturally speaking, we walk based on the sense realm. And the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Please listen, dear people of God. There is a way that seems right. Seem means it's a limitation of your mind and your perspective. It is not right, but it seems right. And the trouble is you can be following that path for 10 years. It's after 10 years you will know you were wrong. So the Holy Spirit can save you wasting your time because destiny is a function of time. Listen carefully. You do not have all the time to keep making mistakes and correcting it. You will spend your whole life archiving mistakes and their various answers, not living an effective life. The Holy Spirit can save a lot of people trouble if they would listen to him. But we live in a world today where we see him just as a religious luggage that we just have to carry since he came together with Jesus. And we now carry... And we, we assume that kind of mindset and we feel the Holy Spirit has nothing to tell me about my life, my church, my family, my business. After all, he's some kind of religious person. We're facing money issues here. We're facing common sense issue here. And he stands like in the similitude of that dove that he is. Watching you frustrate the wisdom that can change your life. Redefine possibilities in your life. And some of us with our childishness, childlikeness and foolishness all together we embraced him because there was no alternative and we embraced him and said if you can lead me I'm stupid enough to follow and he says follow me and all that we keep seeing is a world of beauty and glory mysteriously so continuously so let me tell you the truth the Holy Spirit can turn anything if he turned darkness to light he can turn any destiny. Listen to me. You have given things of lesser value a chance to guide you. Why don't you in this conference open up your heart fully and say, I am tired of trusting statistics as important as they are. I am tired of trusting the figment of men's imagination. Spirit of the living God, you were not introduced to the earth after creation. You were the reason why it happened. The Bible says in the beginning, God, before science, in the beginning, God, before intellect, in the beginning, God before internet don't change the formula in every beginning in the beginning of your business God not a shop not supermarket not a loan not capital in the beginning God in the beginning of your marriage God when you compromise that formula you stand the risk of not being guided there is a way that seemeth right Jesus had this to say about Satan, that he can appear as an angel of light. Do you know what that means? You can be deceived sincerely thinking you are in the will of God. And for many years you will go around in circles hoping you are right. Only to find out that there are many people today 
in old age angry and they wonder it looks like they were scammed and cheated by life because satan the bible calls him a thief never calls him a friend john 10 10 that the thief cometh not but for to steal do you know what that means before he comes he has to verify whether there is something in your life worth stealing worth killing and worth destroying that his presence in your life is proof already to you that there is something worth stealing killing and destroying the spirit of the living god given by god available to guide believers the the first expression of guidance of the spirit we see in the bible happened in matthew chapter 4 we don't have time for that the bible says as soon as jesus is it in your bible that when jesus was baptized of john declared to be the son of god the next thing the bible says is and the spirit drove him to the wilderness how do you go to the wilderness after such a glorious moment You've now been ordained. You should go to the city, not the wilderness. This is the Holy Spirit for you. Sometimes after powerful moments, the city may not be where to go. He may tell you, go to the wilderness. It may not make sense, but that is where you will return with power. Is someone learning already? So guidance and direction. Number two, very quickly. What is the second ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer? Mm. the holy spirit according to scripture is the revealer of the will and the word of god the holy spirit is the revealer of the will and the word of god i wish i had the time to discuss this issue of the will of god because you see the primary assignment of the power of god is to bring you and to keep you within the jurisdiction of God's will. The immunity of the believer is within the jurisdiction of God's will. Satan's assignment is to have a basis to attack you by taking you out of the will of God, either through deception or through ignorance. Are we together now? Provided you are within the will of God, your immunity stands. Provided you are within the will of God, the full potential of your Christian experience will continue to manifest. So when Satan comes to destroy, he does not just destroy or strike you, either to whatever means. He has a plethora of options to deviate you to come outside the will of God. The power of God has an assignment to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God. That is the assignment of the power of God. Everything functions in the kingdom with respect to the will of God. Please do not forget this. Everything functions in the kingdom with respect to the will of God. Your excelling in life is not just based on your ability to think or to, 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 to you know, to create a course of a pathway for yourself as important as that is it is the degree to which you are aligned to the will of God per time per season that is the degree to which you excel Jesus himself when he came watch this he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me Luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 15 it was a manifesto of his reason for coming Paul reiterating why Jesus came, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, not to do my bidding. Even Jesus in Gethsemane said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass of me, if it be possible. He said, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the will of God. You can start out life having all kinds of ambitions and there's nothing wrong with that except that when you submit your destiny to his editing, he begins to gravitate you sometimes towards paths you never plan to go but that is where your glory resides. You may start your journey intending to be a great doctor, a great engineer, a great and that is wonderful eventually as you walk with him with every sense of love he now begins to gravitate you towards a path sometimes a path that no one in your family has followed virgin dimensions that looks like you are going nowhere except that you will stumble into glory that your children's children will eat from it is true he can reveal the word of god 
he can reveal the will of God. Studying scripture without his influence will only lead you to a lot. If you study the Bible without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, all you are going to stumble across is annoying scriptures that contradict themselves. That is all you are going to find there. Do not be over-righteous. And a demon spirit came from the Lord. A lying spirit. You read all those kinds of ideas. What kind of a God is this? I mean, you say God is love and God killed this one. And that's all you will study. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring perspective. Is someone learning? Say amen. amen. Please shout amen again. Amen. Yes, sir. Many people have attempted to read the Bible like a novel. Now, in truth, the Bible is an archaeological book. The Bible is a literature book. The Bible is a historic book. So you can find all of those, those, those schools of thought there. That is the reason why the Bible must be both opened and the seals unlocked. Just because you open your Bible does not mean the seal has been unlocked. No. It must be both opened and the seals unlocked. If the seals are not unlocked, you are only going to see English or history or archaeology. It is when the seals are unlocked, you will now begin to see a mysterious cohesion. Scripture joining with scripture and it will now begin to make sense. Is God helping someone? Holy Spirit, why am I here? I'm tired of escorting men around the corridors of destiny. I need to find perspective and bearing for my life. Spirit of the living God, would you show me the path to my life? And you open the word in the place of prayer and it comes. Jeremiah, while you were yet in your mother's womb, before thou camest forth, 1 verse 5, it says, I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And the young Jeremiah said, ah, but I am a child. He says, say not I am a child. Do not say I am a child. Wherever I send you to and whatever I ask you to say, that you will do. Hallelujah. Many people are living their lives. Do you know? Do you know? Psychologists teach us and, and this is a very intelligent church. Psychologists teach us that one of the principal factors that sponsor fulfillment is a sense of progress. Am I right on that? That the moment you find out that your life is stagnated and pegged at a level, you know you are stagnated when the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age, eventually you will be frustrated because the human being was not designed to live in that state of perpetual stagnation. Psychologically speaking, there are six fundamental factors that translate to fulfillment. Number one is called security. Number two is called variety. Number three is called significance. Number four is called growth. Number five is called achievement or accomplishment. Number six is called love and acceptance. You only find fulfillment when these things, these factors work together within your life. So if you are bankrupt of any of this, eventually you will be frustrated. Our world today is full of angry, jealous, bitter, frustrated people because number one, they have no sense of security. Their lives is full of a lot of boredom, no excitement. Are we together? There's no sense of significance that comes by reason of the value that they provide. And naturally, there's a lot of rejection. It's the worst thing that can happen to any human being to be rejected. And then there is no sense of growth. There is no sense of impact and contribution. As a result, they are frustrated. The Bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones. That a person can literally be sick of frustration. Listen, I want you to begin to look to the Holy Spirit to give your life value and meaning. Is the reason why people begin to resort to all kinds of satanic and demonic things as they join cult groups, they join all kinds of things. Are we together? So that we will not lose a generation because they are all around trying to look for fulfillment. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the will of God. There are many apostles and prophets and pastors roaming around the streets of nowhere. Wasting their lives and their destinies. There are many Esthers and Deborahs. 
Many people who should be making destiny count, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. But many have not trusted the Holy Spirit enough to reveal the will of God and the word of God. I'm standing here today as a testament that he's able to reveal the will of God. He can bring beauty and glory out of your life from nowhere to a place of grace. Is someone learning? Yes, sir. Number three, we have to wrap up. Shalaka Subayeda. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the word. I didn't have the time to give you all the scriptures. You may want to write one under point two for reference. First Corinthians chapter two from verse nine to 12. Very powerful scripture connected to that point. First Corinthians two, nine to 12. The Bible says that he's able to reveal the will of God. Number three, for sake of time, he is the confirmer of the word. Now I like this. The Holy Spirit does not just guide and direct the Holy Spirit does not just reveal the word of God and the will of God. He is the confirmer of the word. What does it mean to confirm? To give it life. To insist that what the speakings of God do not look like a lie in your life. To bring performance to the speakings of God. The Holy Spirit is the confirmer of the word. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. Mark 16 and verse 20. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming not their word, confirming the word with signs following. Confirming the word with accompanying signs, New King James says. Confirming the word. Every time God speaks concerning your life. Every time pastor stands here to declare over you. The confirmer of that word is the Holy Spirit. No wonder he had to appear before God said. The union of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. God by his spirit was already hovering around. And then... God said, and there was, and he saw that it was good. If you want to see that it is good, then ensure the Holy Spirit is there before you begin to speak. The confirmer of the word. The confirmer of the word. If I declare upon you and I say, in Jesus' name be healed, in Jesus' name may doors open, if it ever happens, the agency that is responsible for that performance is the Holy Spirit. And hallelujah, he's here in this place. Our speakings, listen, the confidence from which we speak is not ourselves. The Bible already told us that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. It says that our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. The word able there is qualified up to the task. The word sufficiency means the capacity to rise to the occasion without disappointing. That's the Holy Spirit's assignment. That you will say in the name of Jesus I will feed my mother, my father, and my siblings in their lifetime. And they may laugh while you are saying it. Because it looks like nothing around you looks like the word of God there. But the Holy Spirit begins to confirm. And there are many ways he does that. Generally speaking, all blessings come from God through men to men. So God begins to navigate people, circumstances that work for your favor. And in no time, that rejected stone. Ah. Someone lay your hands on your head if you can in one minute and declare that in the name of Jesus, every word that has come over your life, the spirit of God is confirming it. Someone go ahead, lay your hands on your head and declare. Are you praying in the name of Jesus? someone declare 10 years ago a prophetic word came over my life the Holy Spirit is still able to bring it to pass you are brooding over every darkness 
You are causing light to shine from darkness. The Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. No matter the situation, brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine. Listen, don't be surprised that after this conference, fire falls on you and you who was an ordinary person by the end of this year, you were a man of God that nations are placing a demand upon. Don't be surprised that whilst you are here, you do not even have a single house of your own. And by the end of this year, do not neglect prophecy. Not when the Holy Ghost is there to confirm it. Listen. The Holy Ghost came upon a virgin. She said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. I was never taught as a young teenage girl that a woman could be pregnant. A virgin could be pregnant without a man. And Gabriel said, leave that to the office of the Holy Ghost. He knows how to confirm the word. Yours is just to believe it. The power of the highest, he says, shall overshadow you. Don't be surprised that you are in debt right now to the millions and to the billions, not even knowing how you will come out. And yet the spirit of the living God He's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. Yeah. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age to Come. He's changing everything. In obedience to Christ. For someone here, he's recreating everything. In obedience to Christ. It's in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. My destiny. In obedience to Christ. What God has said is what stands. In obedience to Christ. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. The Bible says for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. It must be in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. The spirit of the living God, the confirmer. If you have not seen it come to pass, you do not worry. There is someone behind the scene He's a master at turning chaos to light. Working on your body. Working on your finances. He says, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hmm. He is the confirmer of the word of God. This is why we speak over lives. We speak over destinies and we speak over nations. Not knowing the Holy Spirit will make us sound like we are just arrogant people making empty confessions except that there is a covenant he has vowed to bring performance to the things that we speak. And in the name of Jesus, let me speak over someone here that every door that has been closed over your life and your destiny, I stand by this mantle of Jesus upon our lives and I command that door, Ephata, be open. I command that door be open right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to be sensitive. We are going to pray. We are almost done. For the sake of time, I will just give you two more very quickly. Right, please. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the believer. The fourth ministry of the Holy Spirit is that he represents the voice of God to the believer. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul was mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy, 
and here's what he has to say. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. Please read with me the first four words you can see projected there. Ready? One to read. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. One more time. The Holy Spirit speaks. He does not just do. The Bible says the Holy Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, he says, some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. But the point I'm pointing out is that he said now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, now, the spirit speaketh expressly. The Bible says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in the time past through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he hath appointed to be heir over all things. And that son, the spirit of God has come as a continuation of that ministry of the son. The Holy Spirit speaks. He represents the voice of God to the believer. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 29 Revelations chapter 2 and verse 29. Let's read it together if you're a Christian. Ready? One, to read. He that hath an ear, uh -huh, let him hear what the Spirit saith. To who? The Holy Spirit does not just speak anyhow. He's speaking to the church. There are things that he tells everybody, but there are things he's speaking to the church. This one is to the church. He that hath an ear, there is a kind of ear that you need to hear him. Because he was speaking to people who had ears. But he said there is a kind of ear you will need to hear him. He that hath an ear, meaning nobody has that kind of ear. It's not everybody that has that kind of ear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Now, this will be my final point and then we'll pray. I believe with all my heart, this is one of the reasons why Jesus sent me here to this church tonight. The Holy Spirit, please write, is the custodian of the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. Administering the power of God resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the power of God. In Isaiah chapter 61, the Messianic prophecy, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Then he begins to list a number of possibilities that happen because he has now come even with his anointing. It says to preach glad tidings to the meek, to proclaim liberty to the captives. You do listen, it takes more than a sincere heart, it takes more than kindness to produce supernatural possibilities in this kingdom. Possibilities in this kingdom are sponsored by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can be well intentioned, you can be sincere, like many believers are, but it takes more than sincerity to command certain dimensions of results to proclaim liberty. To the captives he has anointed me verse 2 he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god verse 3 says to comfort all who mourn you see that it takes more than compassion to comfort those who mourn it takes power to comfort those who mourn yes please it says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion i like this it says to give them beauty look up do you know the power of God can make beauty as a gift? You can give a man beauty and say, I look at your life and all I see is shame and reproach. I can give you by the power of God beauty for ashes, joy, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for heaviness. Then he says that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of our God that he might be glorified. Jesus read this in Luke chapter 4. And when he read it, the Bible says he looked straight at them. He had come as the fulfillment of that prophecy. And he closed the book. And he said this day, the Bible says their eyes were all fastened at him. And he saw a man with a withered hand 
at the congregation and he said, Mr. Man, stand up, stretch your hands. In Luke 13, when we get there, we see a woman who had been bent over. Are we still Bible students? Bent over for 18 years, the Bible says. And Jesus looks at this dear woman and says, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. Lays his hands upon her. He couldn't do that as a baby. He ran away as a baby. He couldn't do that as a teenager. 18 years of his life, he was silent. From age 12, we do not hear about Jesus again. Next time we hear about him, is a 30-year-old man coming to be ordained by John. He couldn't do that until the Holy Ghost came. Even the word incarnate needed to be anointed. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, the Bible declares that he went about doing good and healing how many? All they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. For God was with him. For God was with him. When Jesus sends the disciples in Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's read verse 1, then we jump to 7 and 8 for sake of time. Um, Matthew, I meant to say Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. He's commissioning the 12 now. Matthew 10 verse 1. Then we we'll run to verse 7. Matthew 10. When he had called unto them the 12 disciples, the Bible says, he gave them power. What did he give them? Listen, when you meet Jesus, he will not just give you a message alone. He does not just give people messages alone. He gives them power. He says power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Verse 7, he now charged them. He said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but don't stop with a sermon. They will not believe you. He says, prove the validity of that sermon by healing the sick, by casting out, I mean, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Is that in your Bible? In Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria. Is that in your Bible? That Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. The next verse says the people with one accord, they gave heed to the things that he spake, hearing and seeing. In the kingdom we do not hear alone. You must hear and see. There is an experience to the kingdom. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible says hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. What were the miracles? For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies that were lame were healed. As a result, there was great joy. Great joy. This is the fullness of joy in that city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that Acts 19.15? I hope I'm not wasting your time. We're about to pray. Acts 19.15, please give it to us. Romans, is it Romans 19.15? I'm, I'm trying to look for it. That he went about down to Illyricum. He said, I have fully preached the gospel. Please look for it. 1519 or 1915. The scripture just came to my heart and I want us to find it. I want to show you something very powerful about the manifestation of the power of God. God bless you, 1519. Let's read together if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. Through mighty signs and wonders, uh -huh, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully that means if you preach a gospel that is not backed by the power of the Holy Ghost, you did not fully preach. The fullness of the gospel is the message and the power. The message and the power. The message and the power. God heals, then you see healing. God lifts men, then you see liftings. God restores, then you see restoration. That is the fullness of the gospel. The Holy Spirit, the great power of God. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, I am full of power 
by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. I am full of power. Someone prophesy to yourself. I am full of power by the spirit of God. Please take it down for me. I am full of power by the spirit of God. Preacher, don't preach without power. You will only be angry. I promise you, no matter how sincere you are, your heart will be filled with compassion. I have seen with all due respect, sincere people who love God propose many things that God can do. But when the time to give performance to the word comes, One of the major things that the Holy Spirit seeks to do in your life is to release that power. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Please give it to us as we wrap up. The Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. With great power. It takes power to be a witness. A witness is a validator of a claim. Some of you here are in the judiciary. The assignment of a witness is to prove the truthfulness or otherwise of a statement. And there is no witness that comes alone. He always comes with a token of truthfulness called the evidence. Is that true? He calls us witnesses. And if it is true that we are witnesses, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence that Jesus lifts, heals, delivers, Jesus blesses, he opens doors. And sometimes in the court of law, the judge will tell you your witness is not strong enough to persuade him. You need strong enough witness. If we want to see the world bow to Jesus, we want to see systems and cultures shift to reveal and reflect the glory of God. It would take more than a sincere plea. It will take the power of God. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 7, the apostles now came to Jesus, then disciples, and they said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He never said you will be preachers. He never said you will be bankers. The names are just the geography of your witness. The generic name given to all saints. As far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned, is witness. With great power, they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible declares that great grace was upon them. Can I tell you, there are many of our loved ones who have refused to be saved because they are frustrated by the portrait of our Christian experience. Our Christian experience largely, now I'm speaking apostolically, not just to you. I'm speaking to all who are following and who will even follow. There are many, many believers. If you add evidence to your speakings, there will be many things. There are many. Do you know the reason why evangelism is hard in our days? Because this is a world that is desperate for proof. Everything science says, it tries to prove. So people are already used to backing up statements with evidence. When you are speaking to intelligent people, you don't come to propose ideas. In our world, we use statistics and we use data. Is that true? When you say Africa is the poorest nation, they say, prove it. When you say America is the richest nation, they say, prove it. For someone... God is, he brought you to this conference to tell you it's time to begin to prove the validity in your office. It's time to begin to prove the validity of the things that you believe. For many years you have been saying God can change people's story. It has become like, it has become like a statement with no power. But the day it happens through your life, then from your life to others, did you not read what happened in John 4? Ladies and gentlemen, we are Bible students. Jesus meets this woman at the well with five men in her life, the six not even being her husband. And Jesus begins a discourse with her. In her arrogance, she thinks he's the eighth man coming. And then they begin the discussion. And she finds out that this man is more interested in her life, her soul. Perceiving he was a prophet, she now brought the matters of worship. 
And at the end of that, she was marvelously convinced. The Bible says she left everything. That is how powerful the power of God can be. It can make men leave everything. She came to fetch water and she left water. Who told you they cannot leave what they are doing? It's because there's not enough evidence. You've not convinced them enough to be able to leave what they are doing. To say, I choose Jesus. She ran and told everybody, come see a man. She didn't say, come see Jesus. I don't know his name. I don't care. All I know is come see a man who told me everything that I had done. The people did not come because they believed. They didn't come because they loved Jesus. They came because of the depth of her witness, her persuasion. When they came and encountered Jesus for himself, they said this about that, the, 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 the encounter with Jesus. Now we believe, not because of you. It says, for we have seen for ourselves that someone will look at your life and say, I know from January till April, things were not working well. But I heard you talk about one conference, I don't even know the name. In one month, look at 10 years being added to your life. Can I tell you, please do not make the mistake of saying witness, results, and evidence does not matter in the kingdom. The end of all arguments is the presence of a result. I preached a message last year called commanding salvation over territories and in that message I teach that results are also evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. There is a kind of evangelism that your, your lips is not what should preach it. Results are preachers and they have their audience. A territory can hear that preacher. I can tell you results preach well. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus said, ye will not believe. The Holy Spirit. This is why God put it in the heart of our Father to bring this topic to say, listen, the reason why certain things are not happening in my life and your, li uh, and your life is because probably we have embraced every other thing. But we have pushed this gracious spirit away. We've left him as the business of apostles and prophets and preachers. What does he know about money, we say? What does he know about raising children, we say? I'm an experienced counselor. Congratulations. It took his breath for you to be that. And he's wise enough to add anything to your life that is not there. The Holy Spirit does not take away from men. He adds. He multiplies. Look what he did with Jesus. Do I need to tell you the great men in the Bible, ordinary men, weak men. It says time will fail me to talk of men like Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. Women received their dead back to life. They shot the mouth of lions. It is by faith, but it was through the spirit. Through the spirit. It is by him that we leap over a wall. It is by him that we run through a troop. Every time you see extraordinary exploits in the life of an individual, it is impossible to credit a certain threshold of results just to intellect. Now my story and we end. I began my pursuit loving the Lord even though I came from a background of missionaries. People who love the Lord. My grandfather happened to be the first trustee of one of the great denominations in the north. And you would think just having that rich heritage of a Christian background would automatically translate to an excelling life. No, that did not happen. I got to a point where the more I read my Bible, I started asking questions. I asked preachers. I asked several people questions. And people nicely and diplomatically just dodged away the question. And that's one of the ways that destiny cries. It leaves you with questions that your lifetime will be the answer. Days turned to weeks. And I began to explore the life and the materials of men who were producing the kind of result 
that looked like what the Bible was saying. Because the Bible says to follow them. There are some them who have obtained what you are looking for. And I remember among the many encounters that I had, some of you have heard them in my teachings, but I'll just bring one for the purpose of this discussion. My apologies for stretching you on your time. So I'm on my way going for a crusade and Red Hat Bonke is the person doing the preaching of blessed memory. I was already preaching and God was already using me. But you see, there is a kind of hunger that when you have, it swallows up all your achievements and it makes it look like you've not started anything. That is the spirit of a champion. The arrival mentality is why many people remain as mediocre. Champions always act like they've not started. It is the character of all champions. The passion to press. At the end of his life, he said, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me, he said, I press. The apostles speaking. So I went for Reinhard Bonke's crusade desperately searching for an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The bits that I had seen and gotten my own encounters, several other gifts in the bodies, in the body who had blessed me. And in that crusade, we stood there the first day with the simplicity, childlike faith. He preached and mighty miracles, supernatural manifestations of the power of God. And I said, this is it. Transformation is difficult until you have a reference. You can't change into nothing. There must be something. There must be an individual that personifies what you are attempting to become. Even if you desire to be greater, you have to first attain onto that level before you go greater. By the second day, I made up my mind because I understand that one of the laws of impartation is that it answers to honor. Honor to both God and the careers. You will never receive from a colleague. Colleague mentality is why many people never receive in the body of Christ. And so I made up my mind, didn't have any much money to give him, wouldn't even have access to him. But then I said, at least let me serve. And here's what I did. Crowds of people already coming. I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs and sick people. And I said, let me sow this seed of honor by helping the people and let me wheel them in the front. And while I requested that they allow me wheel, they said I was not part of the committee. I said, what committee? You don't know where I traveled from. Committee? You are joking. I came here with desperation and hunger. And as I pushed those people to the front, I said, Lord, this is how you will honor my meetings too. The Bible says, and without all contradiction, he said, the less is blessed of the greater. There's a reason why I'm telling you this story. And I stood there for six hours, standing hungry but determined, tired but determined, until your future becomes greater than your today. You are not qualified to get there. You have to be able to endure and stretch yourself from border to border. I stood there, my face fixed upon that man, and he preached a very annoyingly simple message for, I mean, with respect to the kind of passion I brought for that crusade ground. I brought to that crusade ground. Simple message. And when he was done, he was going to take a cup of water to now start ministering the baptism. And here's why I told you this story now. My eyes were open for the first time. I was not strange to visions by that time. God had helped me. But then that would be the first time the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. My eyes were open tens of thousands of people on that crusade ground. And then I see this giant bird without exaggeration. It would be as big as this auditorium hovering round, completely white and glistening. I thought everybody was seeing it. What kind of a bird is this? And it had like bands, like silvery bands. It was not flying. It was soaring. I was watching this phenomenal sight. What is happening to me? Someone explain to me. And the spirit of God by that encounter. I just went to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2. And the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. And listen, I had a voice 
that said to me, the union between the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. It was not just something I read in my Bible. By the time I returned from that vision, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I turned. From that day, among many other phenomenal experiences, my life changed. Because I said, I do not want to bring a gospel I cannot prove. I read the stories of T.L. Osborne. I read the stories of Papa Hagen. Those who have joined the cloud of witnesses today. These men have handed the baton and I made up my mind that in my lifetime, my generation will not fail. That we will stretch ourselves from border to border. Someone is sitting listening to me and this same cry is welling up within your spirit. Help them please. I'm speaking by the spirit of God because the anointing of the spirit right now is going to begin to rest on people. People. I want you to please bring them out right now. Just a few minutes and we're done. I'm stretching my hands. Please bring them out. There is a reason I ask that they come out. I sense in my spirit that there are even women after the order of Deborah. There are mantles. Help them please. I introduce to you the paraclet of the father. I introduce to you the spirit of grace. The maker of men. Please whether you are or shall not help them. Shalike parike toske de balakos, krante parika tosia tabash. I'm praying. Listen, I like you to be very, very sensitive. Something is going to happen that will change your life. The Lord is telling me there are some of you. He has shown you dreams. He has shown you visions. You've seen yourself doing mighty things. But the issue is the mantle and the grace to walk this thing. Let me now begin to pray according as the Lord is leading me. The first prayer point right now is that there are people who the mantle for prayer and supplication, the art of holding on to the horns of the altar. Where are they? I stretch my hands. Receive that impartation now. Bring them out. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Let that anointing rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. From the choir to the congregation, I open up your spirit. Let the fountain of the deep begin to gush out from your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women like Anna the prophetess that will pray revival down upon fountain of life upon Nigeria and Africa. I want to pray for someone here. There are apostolic and prophetic mantles hovering around the earth, hovering around Africa, and Nigeria in this end time is playing a strange role. I want to release that grace. I don't know who, but I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people receive that grace right now. I stretch my hands. Take that grace. Bring them out. Take that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Shabkete parakatos. You will see men of fire rise from fountain of life. Old and young together catch fire by the spirit of the living God. Preaching the gospel with proof, the evidence of signs and wonders. Now hear me. For those of you who have listened to my recent teachings, I've been heralding, sir, the Lord revealed to me that one of the graces that is being restored to the body of Christ is the healing mantle. I know we may have seen pockets of healing, but it looked like when a generation of fathers left, it looked like a, there, there was a gap in the healing ministry and just a few people here and there and everywhere I have traveled there has been a clarion call mantles don't leave the earth these mantles are still on earth and even in this place tonight I know there is someone maybe not everybody I want to stretch my hands fire is coming on certain people right now is a healing mantle for the end time father where are they I decree and declare 
receive that grace right now men and women I ignite you with that fire of healing please don't be tired we're wrapping up we're wrapping up please hold and bring for me two people right now one gentleman and one lady they will begin to run by the anointing hold them so they don't injure themselves and bring them out we have not come to you with cunningly devised fables there is a pastor that is watching the Lord is revealing to me there is a pastor you are in Lagos here you pastor a ministry you are an overseer you are watching and you have been crying for this healing mantle this is what God is revealing to me and, and it's not just for self aggrandizement in the name of Jesus I pray for you may that grace rest upon you now now hear me please please listen there's a reason why I ask that these people come out bring a lady for me right now who is going to shout a loud shout to the hearing of everybody please bring her out this is by the spirit a very loud shout bring her out now listen please hear me When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you will never, never, never be ordinary. There are many of us mothers, fathers, young people. Hear me, fountain of life. There is a dimension of grace that God wants to deposit even concerning the new that he is doing in this church. I'm telling you this by prophecy because I sense in my spirit that much prayer has been going on in this church there is a season ending in this church and a new season beginning hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking this to you by the spirit of god there is a season ending and it is the ministry of prayer and intercession that is going to usher in the new season i'm telling you this by the spirit of god from the choir to all the departments god will start staring it in the hearts of people you will see young men rise with fire people of power and grace hallelujah praise the name of the lord please can you spare me five more minutes hallelujah five more minutes who is i'm hearing the name leko leko come your life is about to change. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Sadly and unfortunately, I know that the prophetic and the apostolic in parts of this nation and around the world has been abused with all kinds of things. Please make no mistake to think everybody is like everybody. There are people who have been forged from the furnace of affliction. There are people who have worked with God and the price they gave for all of God is all of themselves. Are we together now? I'm saying this so you do not think when you see a manifestation of power, miracles you just think everybody no there are people who love god sincerely what do you do my friend Estate. Huh? this man Estate. what do you do i don't have a job at the moment i want to pray for you because you are a, a, a mighty savior listen god is going to use you for the sake of your family you love the lord sincerely but i'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing all kinds of satanic manifestations around your life. Please just lend me five minutes. There are two things I need to do by the Spirit before I step out of this place. My friend, can I pray for you? 
Who is Victoria? Victoria. I'm hearing a name, Victoria. Victoria. Is there someone like that? Please make sure you don't tell lies. We are serious people here. Hallelujah. I know the lion, I know the lamb, I believe in the lion, I believe in the lamb, and I will follow the lion, I follow the lamb, I know the lion, something is happening to two of you, two of you that came out here. There is an anointing that is coming upon you and that oppression. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My friend, look at me. Don't cry. God sent you here. Look at me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Go and write it. May, June, July, these three months, God will change your life in a way that will surprise you. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Please don't come out so it doesn't embarrass you. You are owing. You are, you are owing serious money. And the way it is now, it is only the prophetic that can help you. You are owing money that is depressing you. You've been having issues even with your wife from what God is showing me. But in the name of Jesus, by reason of this conference, we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and we declare. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of that situation now. Taking the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Oh, man, my head Oh, that will be someone's song in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Please listen. And I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility. Sir, as I came in and I sat down here, you notice I just sat quietly here. Because there is a way God reveals things to me. As soon as I, that door was open, I was hearing the sounds of chains. And when I hear, listen, when I hear the sounds of chains, it just is, is a prophetic way of showing me that there are destinies here that have been tied by reasons that you may not know why you are doing all you are doing. The Bible said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I'm about to pray right now. If God be God, I come by this mantle and by the spirit of the living God. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And fire will come upon you. Everything that is not of God, it must give way. Are you ready, fountain of life? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I declare be free now. Be free now. I I break you free from every ordinance of darkness. I release. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Help them please. Blotting out every handwriting. Yokes of witchcraft and ancestry and bloodline be broken now. be broken hallelujah please don't be embarrassed I'm seeing a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb this is what God is showing me I can I'm, I'm seeing the number four like four years you are trusting God who is that make sure you are married come 
Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and say, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Listen, in this church, you will celebrate children in the mighty name of Jesus. Those trusting the Lord, can I pray for them, sir? In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one of you. One of you who came out here. I just saw it now in a vision. Right now as I speak. I'm, I just saw fire coming on one of you. Who is standing in for uh, fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the medical situation is. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing two of you. I'm seeing like chains. Just around your stomach. I decree and declare right now every demonic thing that has tied you here at fountain of life at this word explosion be released now be released now be released now release them now help them please release them now I cost that spirit release them now in the name of Jesus release them now by the power of the Holy Ghost release them now in the name of Jesus Hear me, as Eli prophesied to Anna, as Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, I speak to you according to the time of life. Return with your miracle children. Hallelujah. If you are trusting God for healing, this will be the last thing I'll do for sake of time. Please, I want you to lay your hand wherever you are trusting God for. If you have never believed in a miracle in your, in your life, give God a chance this once. Miracles are not fake. Mm -mm. I'm a product of the healing power of Jesus. I wish I had time. I would have told you my own situation. Sometimes one of the ways God prepares you to be a blessing is to give you an opportunity to pass through the afflictions you will be, dis you will be helping people from so that you can have the compassion to minister to them. There is a woman here, you are already pregnant. I need to pray for you. I'm seeing a report that is not good. I'm not a prophet of doom. You are already pregnant. I'm seeing pregnancy. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, anything that wants to destroy your life and that of your baby, out of her now out in the name of Jesus let that be the end of it for the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit please lay your hands I want to pray we may not have the time to take testimonies but do feel free to testify during the conference and for those of you who are watching across the nations of the earth here is an opportunity to be healed no matter how long it has been he gave us the power to bring the life of Jesus to as many. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone, your spouse, your children. I'm seeing someone lifting photos there. You can stand in for someone. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb. Help them. Please keep your hands. You are great. Don't sing. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. Ah, the healing power of Jesus is moving across this place. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. 
there is no one else like you there is no one else I'm about to pray a lady is going to shout a loud shout to the hearing of everybody immediately after that shout the healing power of God will begin to move father in the name of Jesus every spirit of infirmity every devil of darkness masquerading itself as a medical condition the Bible declares that he went about healing all day that were oppressed I command that spirit to let you go now and now in the name of Jesus I bring you life life to your body peptic ulcer be healed now bone conditions be healed now there is a lady here I'm seeing you have an issue of blood you don't have to come out literally an issue of blood this is this is a draining embarrassing situation in the name of Jesus wherever you are I command that demonic thing to stop now there's someone you have a problem with your heart you cannot lie down on this side of your chest to the bed you are going to have excruciating pain in the name of Jesus I declare healing for you now asthma be healed now total blindness partial blindness be healed now there's someone you are having severe pain just at the, the your back the lumbar area in the name of Jesus Christ be healed right now there's a woman your right breast you've been having severe pain and you've been afraid to go to the hospital because you are hoping it does not become anything that you know something funny you don't want to hear any reports but you've been having very severe pain I don't care what the situation is in the name of he who died and rose from the dead let that pain leave you now I'm seeing I don't know if he's a gentleman now or a lady you have a very embarrassing skin condition this is something I don't know is it's like it looks like eczema but it's not eczema you've been trying to treat it right now the power of God is coming upon you I declare be healed now be healed now there is a man here you have a medical condition that is common to men in the name of Jesus I am praying for you the Lord gives you a miracle right now there is a lady whose hair falls you know just like a cancer patient you are losing your hair and you are it's even beginning to surprise you you've discussed this with your mother this is what I'm seeing by the power that raised Christ from the dead your healing comes right now now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed now yeah. hallelujah now I, I, I listen carefully listen carefully I want to charge you by the Spirit of God that you take the time to listen to this teaching again even including the prayer and pray it for yourself and for your loved ones and you will marvel and wonder at what God does to your life would you spare me a minute to speak favor over your life hmm. I don't know how people live without it in fact it is impossible to live without it the proof of favor is not money no money is the proof of value not favor the proof of favor is the tripartite coexistence of unusual kindness unusual access and unusual acceptance when these tripartite forces are working in the life of a man you truly carry the favor of God 
Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty Exodus I mean Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 of the same chapter 2 it says and the king loved Esther above or more than all the virgins the women and she obtained grace he now set a royal crown can I tell you the truth that there is truly a grace for favor that it when the grace for favor comes upon you it is only a blind man that cannot bless you but for as long as a person looks at you they are compelled by God to express unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual access I release my faith with our father and pastor here to speak over someone maybe it's been a wilderness for you you've been trusting God to come out of shame and reproach in the name of Jesus the one who gave gifts to men from the depth of my heart I speak carry this grace for favor carry this grace for favor favor in your business favor in your family favor in your career favor in your church in the name of Jesus Christ let it begin to work for you and for all of you who are out here I stretch my hands I've prayed for you and I declare you will return with testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. My conscience will not allow me if I go without doing this. Please, my apologies. I want to make an altar call. Please, let's minimize movement. I believe in Jesus. I will not sleep sound if I walk away from this place without giving someone an opportunity. In every meeting, even in a conference like this, there will always be someone who is ready to win that war who is ready to make a decision for Jesus listen very carefully the matter of Jesus is not the matter of church and Christianity and religion no Jesus came to give us life there are two groups of people I'm going to call very quickly our time is gone number one those who are saying apostle fountain of life if you will give me an opportunity I truly want to make it right with Jesus I do not want to die in my sin. I want my soul saved. Number two, those who are saying, I remember making this call, but for some reason my life has gone haywire and I cannot truly say I have a functional relationship with this Jesus. I told you in order of priority, the first and the noblest encounter that any man can have in this side of God's kingdom is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any for there is none other name given unto men by which we must be saved. I will count one to five. We have just a minute for this. Wherever you are, I want you to be bold. I want you to be serious. I want you to be sincere. To leave your seat and come and stand right here. I count one to five. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. This is between you and the Lord Jesus. There is one person who must come out here. I begin my counting now. One. Come. Run to Jesus. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour. Don't kneel, please stand for space. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come. Three, if you're coming, run. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour. I need thee, come bless me me now my Savior I thank you and I salute you for your courage Jesus said if you reject me before men I will reject you I will deny you before my father may I please request for those who are making this call online maybe you are following online or watching by way of a rebroadcast here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life 
And for those of you who are in front here, may I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. Amen. Father, thank you for this once. I pray in the name of Jesus. From the book of Proverbs, it says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.